Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. With your esteemed host, Jim Fisher. It's 2019, you know, I could watch Chick Fister butt on my phone in like two seconds. I don't care if you beef with people, Bruce Pritchard, you're an ugly old fucking weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, thank you for downloading episode 208 of Suplex City Limits for April 7th, 2019. Puff Puff Pass, it's your boy, the King of Bong style, Jim Vicious, and he's the original Canadian Destroyer, my co-host. I can't do one better than uh, Ricky Morton, but I can destroy you. I'm Tyler Fudge. How bizarre was that, dude? <laughs> oh, man, that was insane. <laughs> this was like the craziest weekend of pro wrestling it ever. It was. It really was. It, it's, I've seen so many tweets that personified this weekend as a whole so well. And, and oh, go to my Twitter. I think I retweeted them all. <laughs> there you go. We're going to get into that shit. Uh, but if you can follow, like the show, supporting it by becoming a teacher at Pro Wrestling Tees. You can also donate on our Patreon. Uh, let me get back to that. Let's go back to the Twitter. You can follow me at Suplex City Limit. Follow Tyler at the Federation. Things are a little off kilter. It's a wake and bake Sunday. It is. So. It is. We are. We are very, very, you know, exhausted. I think from all the wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was exhausted for that and just days of sitting in front of the TV getting high, watching <laughs> wrestling. So uh, you can donate on our Patreon, become a producer of the show. Like bad motherfuckers, Caleb Morganfield, uh, new to the Patreon, Mr. Joe Justice. Oh. He's a money mark this week on, this, uh, on pay-per-view take two. <laughs> he he's ain't chosen- Festus, he's Joe Justice. <laughs> yeah, he's way better than Festus, Joe Justice. <laughs> Infamous Chris Savage, uh, our friends at the Smack It Down podcast. Check them out everywhere podcasts are found. They cover a lot of shit that we don't, WXW, Progress, etc. Plus, they have cool Australian accents. So, yeah, they can't do. fuck with that. The toilets go backwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And their pussies are sideways. Uh, <laughs> B Rad Brad. Fucking shout out to him. He was at the uh, MSG show yesterday. Yeah, well, see, there was that one point in time where I said to Travis, like, Travis, I think I just seen B Rad Brad take a picture. Oh, yeah, he's the, he was there. Yeah, and then he was that, like five rows in. Yeah, yeah. So it was him. I knew it was him. Fuck yeah. yes. Fuck yeah, B Rad Brad. I'm jealous of you. And then we also seen uh, the B Plus players, the lead singer of the B Plus players take a picture. Yeah. All right. Shout out to those boys. Uh, the Rice and Roni Jabroni, Ty Loney, Kick Ass Keith Martin, Jumpin' and Jeremy Fultz, and Saney and Jackson, Max's Garage, and Plain Vanilla Martin Corns. Today on my Plain Vanilla Martin Corns, I'm putting it into a cup and filling the rest with root beer for a root beer vanilla Martin Corns. Uh, slow. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little chunky. Yeah, what would you like to do with your plain vanilla Martin Corns this week? You know what, man? I've always been a fan of just plain vanilla. Call me. Call me boring. But I can go to Dairy Queen and say, can I get a blizzard with no uh, no, no toppings, please? Just the ice cream. I love vanilla ice cream. So no I'll blizzard just, with nothing? Yep. Just a bowl of soft serve vanilla. I love it. But anyways, that's me saying, Martin Corn, I love you just the way you are. Stay fresh. Vanilla ice cream blizzard? No, that's a little bit of a blizzard. But you want ice cream in a cup then, motherfucker? Yeah, well, see, how do you get ice cream in a cup in Dairy Queen? I tried. It's hard. It's just hard. Mm. <laughs> I asked once, can I just get a cup of vanilla ice cream? And they asked me if I wanted a box of Dilly Bars. And I was like, no, bitch. A cup of soft serve. Not Dilly Is this Bars. in French Canada? No, nope, this fuck? is here in Grand Prairie. <laughs> I used to live right next door mm. to a Dairy Queen. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god, I'd be dead if I lived next to a Dairy Queen. Uh, let's get into this week on the show. We'll be talking about uh, what blood sport, Joey Janela's variety of shows, uh, <laughs> United We Stand. United we kind of fall. Um, yeah. NXT G1. Maybe we'll preview WrestleMania. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's in a couple hours, so. Eh. There's no real point. No, yeah, really I figured really skip it. Because yeah. y'all are going to probably listen to this tomorrow at work or something. Yeah, uh, and, and bitch at us because we're not talking about WrestleMania. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, whatever. So let's get into it as we do every week. Uh, this week with a special top five edition after this word from our sponsor. The Nintendo World News with Mario. We go direct to the ringside at the WWF WrestleMania Challenge. Ready, kid? Just watch me with the Macho Man. And here he comes. 250 pounds of lean, lean muscle. What a leg drop. Wow. An elbow snap. And a body slam. Let's see that again. Is that the end of the Macho Man? No way. I want a rematch. This is Mario for WWF <laughs> WrestleMania man. Challenge. Nope. Nintendo. The return of the Suplex City Limits Top 5, <laughs> our Top 5 matches of the week. Dude, they didn't even attempt to do a Macho Man impression there. They didn't even try. They, Everyone I, has a Macho Man impression. I want a rematch, yeah. You know, like, come yeah. on. <laughs> Everyone's got an impression of the Macho Man except that commercial. Yeah, except for Nintendo. Oh, what a pile of shit. I mean, they don't even have a good impression of Mario. Well, that's true. Uh, that's, uh, that was like a different version of yeah. That was not the it's a me. Yeah. No, that was that was the the the, the plumber Mario. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> this week we have expanded back to the top five as we've watched so much wrestling. It felt like the good thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And there was so, a lot of it. There was a lot of good wrestling. Definitely a lot of good wrestling. Uh, let's start it off here with, uh, I guess, the oldest first. Maybe Roar Raiders versus Ricochet and Black. Yeah, no, that match was was off the chain. Like, what a way to start the show. You know, yeah. I mean? when I was watching that match, I was just like, "How is anybody going to follow this?" Yeah, I thought it was really going to be really good, and I was still like blown away by it. And so, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, the entrance with the the drummers were a little offbeat. But I mean, whatever. <laughs> oh, and we saw that. We've seen that entrance before, so I, I was think like, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this again. <laughs> um, but really good shit, man. It's giant senton to the outside from Hanson. I thought this whole match was agented great. I don't know who decided it, the beats of this match, but it was just well put together. Well, they they made it as if it was two singles matches. You know what I mean? Like it was it was mainly Raymond Rowe and and Alistair Black and then Hanson and Ricochet, the two high flyers and and the two you know other guys, I guess you'd say. So how bizarre is it that Hanson's the high flyer? I know, and they even pointed it out on commentary. It was it was a nice little nice little tidbit. It's just like Hanson's a high flyer. This team like how crazy is that because he's he's so big <laughs> yeah, that sent on the outside is crazy also <clears throat> ricochet with a no one home 630 yeah just yeah. 630 into the fucking mat Skating like shit. it looked intense <laughs> yeah. it did it looked intense yeah it was it was, it was uh -huh. you don't see him miss that very often but at the same time it's not like it's much different than when he doesn't because he usually takes the brunt of that anyways. Yeah, but it looks, I don't know, yeah, with him missing, it looked fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, he sells it off really well. But yeah, the difference between those two to him is probably fucking minimal. <laughs> uh, I thought this was a great match. You know, at the end, uh, standing ovation for Ricochet and Black, who yep. uh, I assume are done. Yes, yes, and apparently the match uh, was supposed to be a little bit longer, but uh, Ricochet hurt himself a little bit. Fuck, really? So yeah, so it was cut short a little bit, and that's why they got that extended send off because they had that little bit of time. It wasn't supposed to be that long, apparently. So yeah, that's that's something else. And then we see, you know, Piper Niven and Tony Storm, two just hot as hell ladies, ringside. Well, uh, yes, dude. That was Piper Niven, two yeah. vicious hottie of the week. Oh, easily, easily. Yeah. Chicks hot, dude. I don't care. I like I like the chubby bruds. Well, I, I, I I love Piper. Uh, Riddle. Oh no, then we're going. I'm going back to the show here. We're going. Oh motherfucker. 
What? <laughs> what what's going I'm on? I'm having uh, various issues here oh, again. What, what kind Skype, of issues? So, <laughs> same as last time. Oh, good. Lovely. Same as last time. So that's fun. I guessed it on the podcast uh, the other day. Comedy uh, Suplex did yeah. not have this problem. That's cool. That, so what you're doing is you're blaming it on me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's hey. me who's having problems, not you. So. Yeah, no, I got I got no errors coming up on my end. But hey, who no, knows? It just like cuts me off and then it like reconnects. So I don't know if you can hear me or not. But yeah, no, I get you. I, I kept on plowing through just in case. Always do that. <laughs> uh, moving on from there, uh, Gargano and Cole, I suppose, which I thought was one of the best matches of the weekend. I, I would agree wholeheartedly. Even being a – we, we give two or three falls matches shit on this show a lot. Yeah, um, boy. But, like, this whole outcome of this match I found totally predictable, and that's not a bad thing either. Um, if it, You know, I, I figured there was no way Gargano does not win. And just the story they told with uh, with Adam Cole coming, uh, you know, with the first fall, and then Undisputed Era getting involved to try to stop Johnny Gungarno from getting a win. You really felt em- like emotion, and 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 you wanted you wanted to get really behind Johnny Gargano to win this title for the first time. I thought it had done a great job of that. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I don't like two out of three falls, but uh, you know, I thought this was really well done, and. Uh, one of the yeah, easily one of the best week matches of the weekend. Oh, easily, I would say it's in my top three. If if we were to do a top three, that would be in it. I think. Yeah, th- yeah, definitely. Um, Gargano goes over, which you know he should. I don't know what's happening with Cole. I guess he's still staying there. Yeah, he I vowed to so. get that belt, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, and he's probably the best um, opponent for Gargano right now. Yeah, okay. it was interesting too. How at the beginning the crowd was all on Cole. They wanted Cole to win, and by the end, yeah. fuck, they got him all the way back around. They wanted yeah. Gargano. Uh, I don't know if that has something to do with the Gargano being somewhat heelish over the last couple months, and, and Cole just being an internet darling. And you know, everybody loves to say "baby." So I had just go to this. That's all you need, mm-hmm. right? Like, that yeah. guy's over as fuck just based on the "baby" thing. Yep, and and you could tell. You know what I mean? You just look at it, and that happens. It's like, oh, okay. They like him. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that, so that was good shit. Uh, also, three matches from this show. Dunn, Walter. Oh, I've turned around on Walter. This was my first, like, real Walter experience. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah. It, it's. I, I don't know how I feel about it. He looks like he should be in black and white. He does. You know? He does. Yeah, I it's agree. Like a 30s wrestler. I agree. I didn't think he did a lot that impressed me, but I do like the overall package. You know, yeah. he looks like a big angry fuck. Yeah. So. And and the entrance to itself, you know, where the screen just goes white and you see his silhouette, and where it's a big silhouette, it it looks intimidating. And and he comes down, and he just looks like you know somebody from like World War Two that you wouldn't want to fuck with. Yeah. He kind of yeah he doesn't really run that but he kind of has like that foreign heel gimmick yeah yeah it seems that way yeah. even though you know the WWE NXT UK is completely foreign <laughs> well, he's from Austria yeah that's true when he's yelling at he kind of sounded like fucking Schwarzenegger a little bit and did you know that the proper way to pronounce his name is not Walter it's, oh yeah what is it Walter oh that makes sense yeah, you know, that makes uh, sense. if you if you listen closely you'll notice that uh um. Nigel McGuinness is the only one that says Volter. Yeah. And on progress, uh, that's, they call him Volter as well. Yeah, that's uh, my family is there, like Germans from Russia. So like around here, there's a ton of Germans from Russia. Okay. And little little towns, some of them that have a W, they actually old timers would say with a V. Hmm. Yeah, we just popped that one guy in Austria. I don't yeah. know his name. That's <laughs> <laughs> just me on the Facebook. <laughs> it's like super nice guy. Forget his name. Shout out to you in Austria, sir. Yeah, stay oh, stay classy, bud. Well yeah, stay classy, bud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else have we got here? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Naito, Naito and Abushi, who mm. just I. Uh, I mean, it's, I think I can't remember who said it best on Twitter, but this the story of this match is two guys dropping each other on their heads until they really can't do anything, and then they yeah. get better again, and the match is over. 
Dude, I don't know. I just thought, uh, you know how Shag Naito looked kind of fucking, he looks rough, dude. <laughs> he's, he's taking a beating in these night, uh, these Ibushi matches, for sure. Yeah, he just looked rough coming down and just moving early on. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, who knows with that long flight over, prior injuries could really seize up. Who knows? I mean, that dude's done a lot of shit, so. Yep. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this was a great match. Um, yeah. Ibushi wins his first uh, Intercontinental title, which is great for Ibushi. And it's also great for Naito as well. Naito can go and challenge Okada. I guess, yeah. People are kind of saying, like, they think that's where it'll go. Who Naito will win the G1? Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, what else have they got going for him right now? Yeah. Who else would I want to see Abushi win the G1, but now that he's an Intercontinental Champion, that's yeah, that's I mean, not going to happen. It, 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 I I would imagine it's one of those things where um, there's probably a lot of uncertainty of Abushi going to AEW, and maybe given the Intercontinental title, who knows? I don't know when Abushi's contracts up. Probably January, like everybody else's usually is. I thought he's not contracted. I, I, I feel like he, he's he's got some kind of commitment to New Japan. Mm. Or else he would be in AEW right now, don't you think? I have no idea. I know that he, I've always it's always been the deal is he doesn't sign any contracts. Yeah. I mean, so it is an interesting deal. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But either way, the match was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed it. And the uh, last match in our top five this week, Okada versus White. Yep. The, I mean, af- after a long night of wrestling, this match kept that crowd going and kept them hot. Yeah. Match of the weekend for you? Best match of the weekend? That and uh, I would say toss up to Gargano and Cole, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. then, I think those two are the two standouts. Yeah. I say Okada uh, of the White weekend. was the Okada Really good White. shit. Oh, easily. I call, I, uh, Happy to see uh, Okada go over in the end. Man, my mouth is not working right now. But uh, yes, uh, the whole world seemed to correct itself after Okada pinned. All right. Except for that one guy on Twitter who says Yeah, well, wasn't that one guy? He's like, oh, but boring. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, like what, really? Dude, come yeah. on. It's it's like I understand if you don't want to see Okada as the champion, but who yeah. else would you have as champion right now? Really though. Yeah, right. I mean Yeah. And after I mean, all the yeah, shit, but you can't. Yeah. And all the shit that you had to go through in this show, you had to send him home happy. There's no way. Like yeah. the middle of the show is just chock full of mediocrity and garbage. Yeah, uh, it, oh. <laughs> and I guess there was argument too about, about like who's going to close the show. Like ROH has lost their fucking minds. I don't know if you want to transition <laughs> out of Okada. I mean, have we got anything else to say about this before we fucking? Uh, I mean, move it, that it, one? it was an Okada match. Uh, he yeah. got his comeuppance on Gato. Uh, he he beat uh, uh, White to a blittering pulp. He just it, it was a. It, a good story to to make Okada just seem like he's back to being Okada. Yeah, and dude, wait, man, he's got the heat, man, for mm-hmm. real. Good shit. He's doing a good job. So I like it. I'll come around on White. I'm all in on him now. Yep, yep. Nope, he's got me. Uh, I can breathe with Switchblade for sure. And it, you know, not to make a pun, but it breathes new life into Bullet Club as well. Yeah. So there you go. That is this week's top five. I'm taking a rip. <sighs> yeah, boy. Wake and bake special. So where do you want to go from here, man? Uh, should we go back? I suppose we should kind of go, you know, in order. So let's let's back it all the way up. Okay, let's talk about the other two matches from NXT. <laughs> well, I was thinking the Thursday because oh. I watched it Thursday. Oh yes. Uh, Bloodsport was started in the afternoon. Yes, I watched it at around seven o'clock at night. But yeah, it was great. I watched it a little delayed, but no less. Uh, overall, I thought this was really good. And dude, this has legs to it, man. I would I watch something so. like this. I, I wouldn't watch it week to week. That's what what's if, the, my debate. I was like, would I watch this every week? And probably not. But I would watch it more than once a year. Yeah. Oh, for sure. If you had a couple big shows. I would be all down. If you had a blood sport on like a WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Royal Rumble weekend, maybe even Survivor Series, I'd watch the fuck out of it. Yeah, I loved the show, man. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, there was something like, about it, man. Like uh, uh, 
you know, really the rowdy ass crowd, including like Dean Ambrose, and, <laughs> William uh, Regal, Beagle in the house. Everybody shouting, "Murder him!" <laughs> One guy wanted somebody to murder somebody every match, and it was fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, why was the commentary in stereo? That was weird. Was the commentary in stereo? I didn't notice. I just watched it on just just a regular TV. I didn't didn't really yeah man get that it was in stereo. But that yeah, is I had weird. The, like Kevin Gill in one ear and the other guy, whoever that was, was in the other ear. Was it Kevin Gill? Yeah, Kevin Gill was one of them. Fair enough. I mean, it, it's it's probably a flub on their part because I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, I thought it was weird. Um, you know, I thought there was some bad shit. Definitely, like, quite a few lines that the commentary said. Or I was like, ooh. But yeah. overall, I thought it was pretty good for two hours of freestyling, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say that uh, Frank Mir saying that he was going to make Brock Lesnar the first wrestling death. I mean, I figured that was a little perfect. <laughs> Not real nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said he wanted Brock Lesnar to be the first MMA cage death. But he said he'll settle for Brock Lesnar being the first wrestling ring death. And it's like, buddy, yeah. Owen Hart. And then he <laughs> hobbled his fucking way out of there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. The it, fuck out that of was, that was, I didn't like that at all. Hopefully Dan Severn got paid a fuck ton of money. Frank Mir wearing a fucking t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me just go back on a little. I'm just looking here. I have... You can tell it's early in the weekend because I have like in depth notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like super card. I have like no real notes because <laughs> no. it gave up on notes. Uh, but just kind of bust through. I thought Phil Baroni for an <sighs> MMA guy, he has a better like wrestling gimmick than so most much everybody. charisma. So much in charisma. WWE. It's got the super stuffed trunks. He's yeah. doing this like, fucking heel dancing, dancing on like past dudes and shit. I thought it was fucking. I thought it was awesome. It was kind of yeah. like if Doss Wonderkid was like self aware. If know? he wore an affliction leather jacket. Yeah. Like if Doss Wonderkid was trying to be a heel instead of a face <laughs> when he came out. <laughs> But dude, he's getting so much. I don't know. Maybe that's that's all his. If that's all him in his trunks, fuck. Good on you, bless you, sir. Yeah, no shit. But Baroni ain't no jabroni, that's for sure. Yeah, this wasn't without its issues. You know, I mean, there was that Garini guy got like knocked knocked out, and he's like calling a spot from the fucking mat, and the camera showed it. I was like, Ugh. But, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's something. These guys, as far as I know, aren't like full-on professional wrestlers, right? They're, they're MMA fighters. It depends. Um, Baroni's an MMA fighter. Garini, I don't know. He seemed to be trained in, you know, jiu-jitsu and shit. I think he is a pro wrestler. Okay. Yeah, because he was the one wearing the gi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, J.R. Kratos, I don't know. I think he's a wrestler. I, I wish I knew more. Well, right I mean, I'd somewhere. assume somebody calling themselves Kratos, like God of War, it's probably yeah. a, a wrestling gimmick. Somewhere, fucking B Rad Brad's like, come on, fuck yeah. <laughs> all yeah. these guys. Yep. <laughs> Make yeah, me he feel stupid the, every day. Simon Grimm, aka whatever the fuck he was when he was in Simon WWE. Gotch. Simon Gotch. I and thought it was good. The fucking abortion. Um, Killer Cross, Davy Boy Smith. You know, I mean, there was a lot of weird shit. I thought Takeda being on this show was crazy. It was. It was that match. I mean, just looking at him is is just disgusting. You know, Dude, what I mean? like the scars yeah. all over in every inch of his body. His body's just ravaged by barbed wire. Yeah, the mosquito must uh, bite him, and he bleeds for days. Yeah. Uh. Dude, he takes this, you know, at the end, it just hits this great-looking giant knee on Gresham yeah. for the win. And I was like, perfect. Plus, I also like the commentary, like, being more, like, fanish, you know? Like, that happens, and the other guy's like, holy fuck! Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. I like I like cursing, so. I do, too, and, and it's nice to get it on these GCW shows. It's more of an adult-oriented show. Yeah. Um, I popped hard as shit because I didn't even really pay attention. He was going to be on the show. The Butcher of Buffalo, Andy Williams. Andy was my new show. favorite wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> he, he plays guitar in every yeah, time I die. Yeah. yeah. And that I, band is fucking awesome. Just like when he came, I didn't know anything about it, right? I didn't know who he was, but he came out and they called him the Butcher of Buffalo. Of Buffalo. Yeah. And I was just like, man, this is a great gimmick. Like he looks like he rip you apart. 
Especially when he comes out to One for Territory. <laughs> I'm assuming it's one of his songs, hey? No, Sepultura. Oh. That's From Brazil. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But came out, that was fucking awesome. Took on Chris Dickinson. Whoever that um, is. I, I don't know. Uh, but Williams got choked out by him in what was pretty fun. That guy. I mean, he still tours with the E-Tid, and as the kids call him, E-Tid. Um, <laughs> and he's doing a lot of shit there, so he can't be a main, you know, full-time guy. I think he's older, too, but he fuck, does, does look he a little older. Look. Yeah, he worked for uh, Smash Wrestling as well, as far as I can tell. Uh, he looks like if you went to some kind of an underground fighting thing, oh. that, that motherfucker, like a smoke-filled, dirty thing, everybody's gambling and shit, <laughs> Jim, that guy would come out, you it's know? the movie Bronson. Yeah. <laughs> That's but this whole saying. show just had that fucking cool feel to it, man. I really liked it. Well, yeah, you I felt like, like you were going to see somebody get killed. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know about that, but well, no, I mean, but, it just you know, had you're, you're watching feel. Bloodsport. You're watching Bloodsport. You're watching somebody get fucking rickrolled. You know, it's just it's one of those things where it's simulated. They look like they're they're hitting hard, especially in the main event. The main event was mm. fantastic. I don't know why I didn't put that as one of my top five. <laughs> yeah, to me, they should have upped it a little. Like they're like, oh, this interesting event, and they didn't really make anything uh, on you know the. Uh, the stakes, I guess, is what I'm trying to get to. So, yeah. to me, it should have been, you know, the loser of these fight, each fight gets nothing. The winner gets five thousand dollars or something. Yeah, you like know what a I'm purse saying? kind of deal. I get and that. It's just the, these guys who showed up are the only motherfuckers who are willing to do something like this. You know, out of all the people in town, and that would explain why you get a Frank Mir, a Dan Severin. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I. I um, that would be a good take on it for sure. Yeah, but yeah, Frank Murr taking on Dan Severin. This one was uh, <laughs> something else. Yeah, well, Severin, Severin is 60. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You could have at least played to his strengths a bit more, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, what strength do you have? He's 60, man. Well, I mean, don't have him get, have to get up and down all the time. You know what I mean? If you get down on the ground, let him just stay on the ground. <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, what else? Yeah, from here, Timothy Thatcher had Deki Suzuki. Mm-hmm. This was, I mean, it was, I don't really have I don't, the, the, the match itself, I thought it was one of the low points. I mean, by the time the match was over, the, the crowd was back into it. But, I mean, at this point in time, all I really wanted to see was Josh Burnett and Minoru Suzuki. Yeah. Yeah, which closed it out. Um, I mean, that was pretty good. Uh, I didn't like the draw. They did the additional time and then draw it again. I was like, come on, man. Yeah, it's kind of a waste. But at that point in time, too, it's like, when do you see a Josh Burnett Minoru Suzuki match? It's the main yeah. event. It's WrestleMania weekend. Give them five more minutes. Just a, a nice thing to do. Obviously, it was just, I, I think it was something that Minoru Suzuki and Josh Burnett just did on the fly. Just the like, guys just do five more minutes. Fuck it. Yeah, Suzuki's work punches and shit are so much better than Barnett's. Oh, I know. I Barnett's know. work strikes weren't that great, but no. still, um, it was still really fun. It was also really nice to at least get uh, to see. And the crowd had a good time at this show. I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. No, they did. Uh, the crowd, uh, I felt jealous for the crowd at the G1 because they got to experience the, the full theme of, of, uh, of uh, Suzuki. But here, at least we got to see it, and the crowd said it as loud as they possibly could. The Kaze Ninane was fantastic. Yeah. I think uh, New Japan underestimated how over Suzuki is in this country. Yeah, I think so. You know? <laughs> He's huge. Like, they didn't have a big match with Suzuki on the on the G1 show or anything. No. No, they, they didn't just put him in the, in the New Japan Rumble. Yeah. He's one of the I mean, he's like one of the most over New Japan guys here. That's my point. But oh yeah, no, him and Ishii, uh, you know Okada, obviously. But I mean, there's a lot of underrated ones that they don't even seem to even think about. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, that was that show. I thought it was really good. Yep. No, I I will say I'd love to happen. see I'd, I'd love to see more. All right. Also, as. Uh, Requested by our boy Scotty from the Sad Pod, he was talking about a uh, a what the fuck top three. Yes, yes, a what so, the fuck top three. 
Do you have his What the Fuck Top 3 offhand? Uh, I don't have his What the Fuck Top 3 right offhand, uh, but I do know yeah. that it had included I do. Hornswoggle, Steiner, or Hornswoggle, Cage. No, his is Gage. Yeah, it's Nick Gage versus Swoggle. Austin Theory? Theory? Theory. Probably Theory. Who is that? Uh, he's he's just, uh, to me, he's just a generic white boy. Taking on Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> this is one of the all matches. A ladder match for the ROH title. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I saw a legless dude wrestling somebody. That so was that's intense. Online. That's in, that was intense. Yeah, that was uh, that was. Was that Joey Janela's spring break? That was Joey Janela's spring break. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, and that whole circumstance of him just going onto the crowd and then going on this guy in a wheelchair in the crowd and he comes out and kicks his ass was fantastic. Yeah, it's just fucking awesome. Launches himself over the top, does like a flip onto him. Yeah. Oh man, like, that guy. That guy. Like. W- He's better than Zach Gallen. Yeah, uh, that was cool. So that's on mine. Um, also, Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan. Yep, that on was, mine. yes, with uh, the great work from that ref and Jared bringing in some great fucking insight on that match. <laughs> he did, has a book where he's like, fuck yeah. Cheapest, <laughs> cheapest book match in the world. Bay, right? Yeah, the crowd did all the work. It was fantastic. It, it, was, hey, it, it was masterful because people were like, oh, what about Invisible Stan? Versus, like, he, they made people want that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They definitely did. Um, you know, that's... It, 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 it's something to be said. That you can't knock it. You know what I mean? Because this is you know, a show where... They they allow you to see this weird fucked up shit because you know it's late at night. You're fucking tired. You're drunk. You're stoned. You're high on whatever is your vice. You know you're gonna want to see this bullshit because it's a party yeah. crowd. It's a party atmosphere. That's what you want to see. Yeah, everyone's probably eating edibles and shit. Good oh, time. Yeah. I did edibles for takeover. I was or for uh yeah yeah for takeover. All right, and then my last one for this is Scott Steiner. Scott versus Steiner. Swoggle, because to me, Scott Steiner versus Swoggle is more ridiculous than Nick Gage versus Swoggle. Although Scotty disagreed, hey, I I didn't see either or, but uh, Scott Steiner to me just seems like he would just rip off his little limbs and just pick them and use them as toothpicks. That's that's what I feel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, just a crazy week. I know. So you could have that one where that dude takes a, uh scissors in the throat. Did you see that? That spot? was fucked. That I was I I I seen the gif and I did not want to watch that match. I was like, I'm, I don't need to see this. I would say that for me, I don't know if you heard me because their internet connection was being shit. Uh, Adam Page taking on Starman from the video game. I thought that was pretty fucking dope. <laughs> and Starman is Virgil. Yeah, yeah, and he took Adam Page's soul. It was fantastic. And you know that was not the only soul to be taken um, this weekend. In Kaiju uh, Big Battle, Mister Cube sucked Dust Bunny's soul out of out of his body with a du- uh, with a Dirt Devil, and he spent the rest of the show <laughs> in the entranceway. Everybody had to walk over him. It was fantastic. That was miles ahead and more entertaining than anything ROH tried to do. Yeah, Mr. Cube is. He's such fucking such a great heel. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> so Forget what it was. On ringside of the gym, we watched one where he killed a beloved character in a match, and it was just so fucking great. Yeah, Mr. Cube. What a villain! Like that's the that's a great villain. Great villain, completely. I, I I'm a big yeah. fan. I love myself some Kaiju Big Battle. Yeah. So there you go. There's our what the fuck top threes. If you got yes. a what the fuck top three. Hit Send us up over. on Twitter at Suplex City Limit. Let us know. I'm I'm more uh, I'd be more enthused to hear everybody's what the fuck top three over their top three matches of the weekend. You know what I mean? Because like to me, that's just more of the of of the you, you find more garbage and shit that way that you can laugh at. In my opinion. There you go. Uh, so that's that. Uh, from there, let's move on to. I don't even want to talk about any of these other shows. Takeover, I guess, or the Spring Break show you watched. I didn't watch it. But. The Spring Break show, there wasn't. You know, we talked about the the best shit from the Spring Break show, in my opinion. We talked about um, uh, the the Adam Page's soul and 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 the you know the other shit. So. I feel spring break can be left alone. Uh, there's, there's, there's a couple other things like Marco Stunt taking on Joey Janela, both making the returns to wrestling after injuries. Marco Stunt is just the smallest man in the world. It's crazy. <laughs> um, NXT, we kind of talked about everything on there. We talked about the other matches, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there was Dream and Riddle, which was better than it had any business in being. Yeah, it was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, thought- interesting how... 
like not riddle you know not a fan of riddle the crowd was if fuck riddle well i felt too because we got velveteen dream everybody loves velveteen dream um right. and by the end of the match you you seen that riddle was was going with a a little bit more of a heel turn so i mean it, it works the way the crowd was treating him so i thought that was pretty cool yeah i enjoyed it uh and then the women's match yeah, I don't really have anything about that. I mean, they, it would have been much better if it was a tag team match because the best parts of the matches were Kyrie Sane and uh, and Io Shirai teaming up. No, yeah. or them kind of going against each other a little bit too. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, you can't go wrong with those two, uh, but they, they obviously are hitching their horse to Shane and Baszler really hard. Yeah. Well, do you know Paul likes? Uh, you know, muscular man faced women. Yeah, she, know, she's proven. she's kinda like China, I guess. <laughs> you just deaf, you know. Yeah. Man yeah, face muscle bound women. <laughs> like fucking Vince. <laughs> so that was for NXT, yeah. Uh, I thought it was a really awesome show. Yeah. A little um, long for NXT, but it was you know. a little long, uh, but uh surprisingly short compared to the next show we'll probably talk about. Uh, United we stand. <laughs> we were going to talk about that. <laughs> that show uh, which was, was perfect. riddled with shit, in my opinion. Yeah, it was Matt riddled with shit. <laughs> uh, okay, so the ring audio sucked. The product, there was production issues abound. The classic, you know, where somebody throws to something and then it doesn't come and it's super awkward. Yeah, that happened a few times. <laughs> The music? Were they hearing different music in the place than we were? Because the music would come on loud as fuck and then just stop. I don't know. I don't know. It, maybe, maybe not. Uh, was there some overdubbing? I don't know. I, I think maybe we heard different music than they did because it didn't seem on time at some points even. Uh, exactly. But, dude, it would just stop. <laughs> like, do you know what? No fader. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It was, it was pretty. The production was pretty shit. I even we do forget. Things. Well, I forget who handled it. I was bitching about it, and some guy defended it on Twitter. Of course, of it was course. Some other some other company's production. So, no, well, I mean, you, sh you should you should know who you're hiring. You know. Yeah, it was it was pretty shit. Um, so yeah, what else we have here? I thought the Ultimate X match was pretty good. Johnny Impact goes over there. So, are you in the same boat as me? Where it's like that's a waste of Johnny Impact to to well, to win the a future title shot, the X Division title. I mean, they've already done him as champion. Like, I feel like he's already run his course there. I can see what you're saying there. Yeah, uh, Ty Valkyrie also retains because. They just fucking run that place, I guess. Now, I guess. I, I mean, the 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 Johnny family are are royalty in wrestling now. I guess you got Cody's family mm. and Johnny's family. <laughs> mm. Taya Valkyrie, man, I like her, and don't take this any you know wrong. But man, she's really done some shit to her face. I don't know what she did, but I liked old Taya Valkyrie. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. I, I like chick who like she looked like you take her home from a bar or something, you know, like she, she looked your life. like a fucking dirty, relatable. I don't know. I don't know what she's trying to do. Oh, uh, she. I, I don't know. Maybe she's trying to be classic, good looking, like like her husband. There you go. But it's not working out. Uh, what else we had? La <laughs> these matches. I mean, LAX low key. Uh, and whoever was with Loki, who was uh, that dude? The, 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 I don't know, some guy from MLW, wasn't it? it was yeah, it the MLW crew was. with Selena Delos Renna or whatever? I don't know. Just two, I'm not, I'm, I'm so white, I can't pronounce all those names. Yeah. I didn't think much of that match. No, I didn't um, think much of many matches on this show, honestly. I thought that Tess, Tessa Blanchard and Joey Ryan was really good. Uh, it's, uh, it's I saw fun, some yeah. people uh, online, of course, complaining of course. on Twitter that. Oh, this is you know, this is beneath her. This damaged Tessa yeah. Blanchard. She this deserves, you know, business. deserves, and slap in the face. You know the usual yeah. fucking buzzwords. Yeah, of course, of course, because everybody's got to hate 
anything that goes outside of the norm, right? God forbid, yeah. God forbid you say you want something different and they give you something different. It's like, oh, you're killing yeah. wrestling. She beats a man fuck? in a fun match that everybody liked. I don't know what more you want. Yeah, if the crowd enjoyed it, guess what, man? It doesn't really fucking care yeah. if you enjoyed it because so, the crowd enjoyed it. If, if he'd have came out and beat her or something, by all means, complain. Yeah. But. yeah. But, man, fuck. Who cares? It's wrestling. Do you really think Joy Ryan using his dick is going to ruin wrestling? No. Um, I forget the name of the dude already from Dragon Gate. Could not make the show, so he was replaced by Flamita. A match I was stoked about. It, dude, it went like I don't even know six minutes, seven minutes. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't long enough for me. I mean, Flamita is is a great hand to have around, and and yeah. I feel like you could have done a lot more. But I don't. I also don't feel it was Rich Swan was his opponent, right? Yeah, Rich Swan's the X Division champ. Yeah, Rich Swan is not really the opponent for Flamita. As good as Rich Swan is, it's kind of a contrasting style, in my opinion. I thought it could have been better. I figured they were maybe running behind, and they're like, well, fuck those guys. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck the crew. Who are we going to fuck over? Ah, fuck over the Mexican and the black guy. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, how about that? Did you see the Sabu and RVD? I did pre-match promo. Oh no, I did not. I did not see that. <laughs> there was no second take on this thing. I assure you, it was so awful, man. It was like somebody's like nailed it. <laughs> it's yeah, not. Like, it's so bad. The best They're we're gonna get out of awkwardly it. talking in front of these lockers. Bad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how good of a uh, of a show are you gonna get out of Sabu anyways? Really though. Really? Yeah. Uh, Callahan and Havoc, I enjoyed that shit. They yeah, had a crazy yeah. monstrous ball match. Yeah, and especially if you think about, too, that Havoc had a hardcore match just before that at, I believe, <laughs> Joey Janelle's Spring Break or something like that. Or Dude, WrestleCon. He, WrestleCon. It, mere like an hour or something before this, two hours before this, he was going through a table. Tom Lawler put him through yes. a table somewhere. Yes. Oh, maybe it was an MLW show. Maybe it was like Battle Royale or something. Yeah, there's way too many shows this weekend. Like, I had all kinds of plans to watch so much more. It's just not possible. <laughs> I watched two shows Thursday, one show Friday, one Saturday. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's a lot in itself, dude. It is. It is. It is. So. I had to go out. I went and saw my buddy's band play. I fucking went oh. out. I've been doing shit. You got Jim, shit to do, man. Jim, can I tell you my rigmarole of Friday? Because it's all wrestling related. So I get off of work. I rush because we're going to a CWE show here in town. Because Psychosis, oh, yeah. Psychosis was coming. So we show up at 6.30. Show's supposed to start at 7. And uh, first is like, can I, uh, do you guys have an ATM? Because I, I don't ever have cash on me. So uh, the, my, the answer I got was, I don't know. <laughs> so then I was like, well, uh, can I go in and see if I can find an ATM? He's like, no. I was like, okay. And he's like, plus, uh, the ring's not really here yet. <laughs> I just looked around. Get the like, oh. fuck out of here, I was dude. like, oh, shit. The ring really isn't there. The people are all sat around to a place with no ring. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so I was like, well, I'll go back. I'm going to go run to the ATM and get some money, and I'll be back. And so me and Travis went back, and we uh, we we got some money, and the ring still wasn't there. So uh, I had taken an edible at right after work, <laughs> and it hadn't kicked in yet. And then uh, I said to Travis, was like, we got to make a decision because we're either leaving now or we're staying because once this edible kicks in, we're fucked. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, <laughs> you're done, dude. <laughs> and Travis, I was like, takeover's on. We can watch takeover. Whatever, the ring's not here. God only knows when the ring will show up. And I just looked at him and was like, let's do it. And so we did. We went back, and halfway through the drive, my fingers started tingling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was that. I went and tried to make... Uh... <laughs> About a 45 minute drive uh, on mushrooms. <laughs> I took them right as I put my car in the drive. I ate yeah. them all. Yeah. And by the time we got there, I was like turning off into random fields and shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, like, any approach, I was like, oh, this is the turn. You know, and I'd go yeah, off yeah, and it'd be yeah. like a field. I'd have to like turn around and come back up. <laughs> no exit. Yeah. I barely made it there. And the other, someone else had to drive us home. So, dude, I would have said fuck you the first time I got there. I'd have got there and be like, you know, I can't come in and use the ATM. Your ring's not here? Have a good evening, sir. Yeah, yeah. And I fucking left and not come back. That's it, shitty. It, it was. Apparently, the truck broke down. 
But uh, oh, okay. <laughs> now, I, I that would be fine. But there was no mention anywhere on their Facebook of any of this. They still haven't mentioned it. So, you really did nothing to tell anybody what was going on. So, whatever. I don't feel bad. I've played uh, hundreds, if not a thousand, fucking rock shows in my life. And we're never, we're late starting a show because the PA didn't show up or the drums or the something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's no, just, I get you. It's just, it's fucking amateur hour, dude. That ring should have been there hours beforehand. You, yeah. That's, this just doesn't fucking work, man. It's, especially, too, when you take, like, you're running a show on WrestleMania weekend during TakeOver. Like, like do you really yeah. think you're going to get, you know, I don't know. It's just to me, it's like, first you got yourself a bad day and then you're late and you don't tell anybody about it. Yeah, like, you gotta God. give yourself plenty of time. Where is this ring? Well, How yeah. long is it gonna take? You know, I mean, like, leave yourself a bit of fucking time. It's not like they were locked out of that building all day. Well, maybe they, it was Friday, right? They worked, I suppose. But uh, well, and and at the same time too, it's at least give the guys at the venue a heads up as to when you're going to be there because, like, he like the literal words out of their mouth is, "We have no idea when the ring's getting here." And they all okay. Yeah, so like, great sell, just, chief. It's, yeah, it's just like piss poor communication all around. It's like, man, <clears throat> fuck. Uh, that's that's pretty silly. Yeah. Uh, what all the fuck are we in this? Are we moving to Saturday? Yesterday? It's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> ROH will put on a show, and you won't give a fuck about anything they do. But New Japan was cool. Car crushing monster truck action. <laughs> I never, you know, I used to work in radio, but I never got to do the monster truck commercials, and oh. I wanted to so bad. Oh, that's wanted to do, I wanted to do the monster truck commercials, man. But you missed your calling. Happen. You missed your calling, man. Like, yeah, never had a chance. Uh, so, yeah, G1 Takeover, basically. I mean, we don't know if we have to go through this whole thing. If you want, we can. But I thought just Ring of Honor is lost. And I think that it's going to be a bad year for Ring of Honor, dude. I, I think so. It's going to be a very bad year. The, yeah. uh, I don't know. The decisions Everybody they was to just, make. none of their shit was over on this show. Everybody just wanted to watch New Japan. Well, the thing is, too, nothing that they presented was worth being over, you know? No. Like Kenny yeah. King winning the honor rumble. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, especially when you had the final two being Muda and, and, and Liger. That was all you needed. That was the perfect ending ending right there. And you had to go fuck up Kenny King. That's to me. Garbage. I had a bad booking, bad idea. Bingo card for ring of honor here. And by the end, I'll say, bingo. <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right, buddy. Cause they never failed to, uh, to fail uh, to, uh, give us a shit fucking call. So they like, did the worst of everything. Kenny yeah. King winning the fucking battle Royal dumb. Worst idea possible. Taven yeah. is champion. Worst idea possible. Yeah. Kelly Klein beating me with Worst. You could not. And then on top of that, <laughs> Angelina love and velvet sky. What the fuck? Yeah. Teaming up with new, Nikki Bella 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus they're going to be Christ. a new group. That's awful. Um, Kelly Klein is still fucking awful. Yeah, and then that New She's York Street terrible. fight, that that Bill Bully Ray Open Challenge, that was atrocious. <laughs> that yeah. was that was that was hot garbage. Like Juice Robinson was just beat up to the point where he wasn't even going to be. He had to go to the hospital. He's fucked. Comes out perfectly yeah. fine. Perfectly we're not fine. even we're not even to the crescendo of stupidity. Oh. Enzo and Cass jumped the rail and do a worked fucking oh, shoot. Jesus Christ. Like seriously? Like that's that's Dude. your idea? That's that's gonna turn you around? Yeah. Um, <sighs> it was really interesting. I saw somewhere yeah. somebody said uh there's something to the extent that uh, Enzo and Cass jump in the rail for a worked invasion angle directly before Takahashi's debut in MSG is like the ex prime example of the Ring of Honor and New Japan fucking relationship. Yeah, it really is. Like to me, that show should have been the the icing on the cake for AEW. You know what I mean? To to have a working relation with New Japan because New Japan should see this as holy fuck, we're back with TNA. Oh, dude, absolutely. Cause, cause I think exactly this is what this looks like. I would like. be done. I would be yep. done with them. I'd be like, have a nice life. Yep. Yeah, it was it was a pleasure working with you, but so long. 
You know, because you look over at AEW, they're an unproven company, but at least they're an unproven company that you can hit your wagon to is not going to do stupid shit like this. Yeah, they're going to fucking be logical if you yeah. hope or you expect, and you're going to be able to do crossover shit with them that's going to be something. Yeah, but at this, this point is... in time, there's no crossover. You know Hello. what I mean? It's just like two complete separate entities, and, and it's night and day difference over 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 the the, the contrast of both. It's just it's madness. It's, it's down to having New Japan turnbuckles on two of the corners and Ring of Honor ones on the other two. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not talking logos. I'm talking the three separate ones or the Japan full one. Like yeah. what? Yeah, is that's weird. It is the whole commentary thing is weird. was brutal too because all they had was fucking Kelly. Well, no, they had the cat too. What's his name? Um, the well, Chris Charlton was there for a second, and then Ian Riccoboni. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would have liked it if it was just Ian Riccoboni and Kevin Kelly. You know, yeah, he, they both kind of do the same thing. I, yeah. I don't know. For me, Rick Abani on the New Japan matches, I was just like, get the fuck out of here. Bro. Yeah. I like you. And I like him on Ring of Honor, but I just didn't like him on the New Japan shit. Yeah. And and he, I will say Cole Cabana was good. I, I enjoyed Cole Cabana uh, because he was just, you know, like you just turn in little tidbits here and there. But Caprice Coleman was garbage. Hot, hot garbage. Dude, they're all in his way, man. They're all in, in Kelly's way. He's yeah. trying to do the shit, and everybody's in his way. Fucking yeah. really, Caprice Coleman? Get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here when I'm watching Okada versus fucking Jay White? Yeah. No, I agree. There's, he had no business being there. But, Garbage. I mean, this was. I would rather have had Kevin Kelly alone. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> if you couldn't get Callus or something, I don't know. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, I don't I, know. You could have used him. You could have used Rocky Romero. Yeah, yeah. I there's there's a lot of names you could have used. Chris Charlton was right there. Sure, he's got a wimpy uh, accent, but like, <laughs> what accent is that? I I don't know. It's really high pitched, and I believe he's he's from the UK. But like, dude, I thought he was Asian. Like no, when man. I hear him, I'm like, this guy can barely speak English. So, what <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong? He sounds really not barely speak English, but he sounds really weird. And then, like, I saw, like, is he the frail looking like white dude? He is the frail looking white dude. That's Chris Charles. Huh. He wrote the book, like the New Japan book, um, uh, Lions Pride. Like, there's a there's a couple okay. of New Japan books that have done really well that he's wrote written, and uh, I believe he's from the UK but lives in Japan. So I don't know if maybe it's like a mixture of the speed being able to speak Japan or Japan, Japanese and, and, and just is, is normal accent. Like, who knows? Well, there you go. Uh, so that was a, another beef of mine. Although I will say ring of honor handled the production of this whole show. And yeah. I thought that was well done. Yep. All, all the shit was right. The music was where it needed to be. It sounded great. Except for the overdose. There was no, well, I don't know. It's like, dude, New Japan owns that shit. I don't know. What is the... Why Why can't it be... You know what I mean? Why? Why could we not hear Taguchi's great fucking theme? Why could they we not, not hear have Roger's song? The rights to that music in the U.S.? Or, I, I don't know what the deal is there. It has to be it, because like, the thing would pop up uh, music altered due to mu uh, copyrights or something like that. Yeah. Seems like the popular take, though, coming out of this show is this New Japan needs to move on. Yeah. Um... I don't know what else we. I mean, we don't have to. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, another thing, question I had here when I was watching Ibushi uh, do a promo. Um, if him and Omega, you know, are making love and all this, can he not fucking teach him English? <laughs> you learn Japanese. Can he learn English? Would that be? Uh, maybe, maybe he's a a stubborn man. That's what Kenny Omega likes because you know he's stubborn. He won't he won't uh, sign a contract with anybody. Maybe he's like, no, I'm not speaking anything else other than Japanese either. I know sounds weird. It's like you, you know you think he would by this point. You'd think um, so, but I guess not. Yeah. Cobb Osprey. Yeah, so this was uh, a good match. It wasn't like the crazy blow away that I thought it would be, but it was pretty good. No, I, I thought uh, they went a great turn to have us uh, Cobb win the never open title because Cobb can bring it back to, you know, those classic bouts with uh, Ishii and and all that bullshit. That was that was where it was at. You know, the never open way title was originally supposed to be for young guys. 
right. uh, but like it, it turned into the strong style, the stiff style. And Osprey had it, and you know he had some matches with Tai Chi and Ibushi. They really ended up just looking like heavyweight matches with a junior twist. You know what I mean? So like, go back to the strong style. I, I, I'm down for it. Jeff Cobb can just throw Japanese men around night and day. I'm down. That's the best part. He doesn't just hit a move. He like throws people and then catches them and does the move. It's yeah, tremendous. It, it is. Yeah, the guy's a goddamn beast. Although. I think I need more from Cobb. Yeah. Because he's like Cobb. He's just like a dude. He's, he's you know, a really great amateur wrestler. He's, you know, he comes out, he does the fucking, the shaka bra. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? I don't know. Does he talk on Ring of Honor? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, there, there, there needs to be something. He needs somebody with him or... Something needs to be a little bit more developed instead of just being it's a like, guy from Guam. No matter how much you like a dude, and it's like as a guy and as his ring ring and everything like that, there's only so long that you'll accept him just being like a dude who just comes down and smiles and that's it. You know? Yeah, yeah, just happy. He's him and him and uh, Paulo Cruz, same thing. Paulo Cruz, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rich Swan was one. Yeah, was yeah was just happy to be here, bro. Yeah. Fucking happy to be here. Um, so that's that. Um, Roosh defeats Castle in like 15 seconds. Yeah, that was a, that was a little much. You know what I mean? But like, it, Castle looks like he's a little worse for wear still. Um, he's still wearing that back brace. And then uh, yeah. he also got a, uh, you know, at least it made Roosh look like a, a fucking brilliant fucking he just looked like a star. Yeah, it makes him look badass um i'm into this i'm interested to see where they go with this whole castle thing um you want to talk about dastardly heel turn deeds this i don't need to see people like hit by cars and shit like that like he turned on the boys yep. dude <laughs> i was, was offended yeah that i felt i felt bad for the boys i did they 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 <laughs> stood by him through thick and thin thick and thin and um. Uh, I thought that was a great heel turn. I'm looking forward to the story to see like where a heel boyless Dalton Castle goes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, me too. Um, I like this. I'm happy. It's one of the good things they have going. It, it, it th- was the, this was the one upside. This match. Yeah. Then we move to Kelly Klein and Ibatani, <sighs> which we talked about. I want to like Kelly Klein because she's really hot. And yeah. she's little. She's got some like she's fucking just really hot. Okay, and she she looks intimidating. <laughs> yeah, you know she looks like she could kick your ass, but unfortunately, when 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 the match yeah. starts, it doesn't really look the same. <laughs> she's just bad, and you know, it's one thing to have a bad women's division, but it's it's another to have a bad women's division in a company that's really based around work rate. Yeah, yeah. Well, like how do you how do those two things coexist? They don't. They're starting to uh, to blur the lines a bit more now with the you know, own cast. <laughs> so I mean, now it's getting even like Women of Honor is not great working women. It's just it's diva wrestling, really. Yeah, yeah. Who would have thought that in 2019 WWE would have a better women's division than ROH? <laughs> Almost more progressive, because ROH just at this point seems to be a lot of fucking really hot chicks who can't wrestle. Well, it's all the all the chicks that the guys are fucking in the back, and Angelina Love, who's well, not hot or can't wrestle. No. Now, which one is it? I, I don't know those two apart. Which one is uh, the blonde one that just looks like fucking the busted? One, the one that looks like a leathered skin hag is Angelina Love. Yeah, the blonde one. And yeah, and then Bully Ray is fucking one with her ass cheeks out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's his, that he dates her, huh? Yes, yes. And then yes. Mandy Leon and Delirious, Kelly Klein yes. and BJ Whitmer, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder how that works yeah, out. Then. I wonder how the pushes are working in this company, guys. Hmm. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Angelina Love looks like the kind of chick. It's like late. It's almost bar closed, and you're like, "Fuck, yeah. I guess." Well, then you go home with her, and then like right? you after you nut, you go to clean your dick off, and like you fucking <laughs> run into some little kid in the hall. Not even little kid, probably fucking <laughs> third piece on her looks probably like fourteen. Yeah, yeah, young enough to score a fucking butt off of before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that, dude. She's, she's married to Davy Richards mm. so that explains a lot you know he's he's a fucking work 
Uh, but yeah, Iwatani, who I do like and I do think is great. It's it's funny how like WWE is like, yeah, we'll take these two hot ones. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll throw leave that the, one back. the homely looking one though. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who looks like a waitress in a sushi yeah. restaurant. <laughs> yeah. And then she came down. I seriously, when she came down, I thought that there was a kid with her. I'm like, why is there some kid with her? <laughs> no, it's another waitress. And, well, the kid was the original waitress. Yeah, she's like the head waitress. What was her name, dude? She was the old Sakai. woman of honor champion. Sumi Sakai. Sumi Sakai. Yeah, fuck, dude. Yeah, I thought it was a little kid. She takes it off. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just assumed it was another girl from Stardom, but nope, nope, not it. Even though Stardom was there that night, they were in New York. But yeah, uh, to be to clarify, I do still think Iwatani's hot. She's just oh, yeah. not as hot as the other yeah, ones. Yeah, she's just got like one of those off teeth, you know. I kind of like that shit, dude. I, I, I like you. imperfections. I noticed this. I was out at a metal show on Friday watching my boys. Uh, play some fucking metal. <laughs> and there was this chick there who, like, was really hot, but had this, like, just had a shitty nose. Yeah. But it almost made her hotter to me. And I was like, God damn, who's that chick? <laughs> it's weird. More than if she was just a hot chick. Yeah. No, I get you. I, I get you. It makes her a little bit more attainable. I don't know if it's that. I just think it's different. You know, it's like you see hot, typically hot broads all the time. And just like, the. Eh. Yeah. Like you see something a little different. Like even if it's kind of fucked up, it's like I don't know. I kind of like that actually. <laughs> Wonder what my dick would like uh, look like on her nose. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, so yeah, Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, Allure. Which yes. Is, originally was uh, supposed to be with Dashwood, I guess, or what? Maybe, yeah, I guess. I mean, because yeah. she just recently hightailed it out of there. Maybe right. Madison Rain might have been a part of it as well. Who knows? Oof. Yep. Uh, that's going to be bad. Whatever this whole thing's going to be is going to be bad. <laughs> I, yep. I got uh, both Jim and Tyler stamp of approval on that one. That's going to be the main focus of their show or their women's division. I so, assume so. I just assume so. Oh, this next segment, dude. Oh. So I guess the Flip Gordon injury was a work. Oh, you're skipping right over. <laughs> oh, like what, what, I'm, what, 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 what I'm trying to figure out how I want to talk about how you the want, Mega Man performance. Oh, oh, well, okay. I'm going to say it in, in simple words that to me is not rude. The ROH are the bigger culprit here because they should know what your fans want. Your fans don't want a concert in the middle of a show. Uh, WWE has proved that in many ways. Uh, there's nothing Mega Man yeah. could have done. To, to save this. It, he was going to get booed because that's not what they want to see. That had to... That was my next question is, do you think that crossed the mind of these people? Do you I, think anyone was like, hey, you're going to maybe go out there and get booed and Bully Ray's going to be the face coming out to <laughs> fucking Sandman, your fucking ECW zombie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Uh, they. I don't think it did. Because they wouldn't have done it if they actually would have just sat down and thought about it for a second. Yeah. I love Mega Ran. Like I said, I played on, played guitar on some of his fucking songs. He is the man. He was on our show. I love him. But that's just a tough spot. Yeah. And he came out and they booed him. And I was just like, oh, no, dude. Yeah. I felt bad. Have you imagined I that? 20,000 people? Like, yeah. he's the nicest fucking dude in the I world, know. honestly. No, I know. Yeah. Right. He's one of those guys I'd be like, Mega Red is like fucking five times the man that I am, like that good dude or good person that I am. Yeah, he's, he's, it's none of, none of his own, you know, this was not his fault. No, T. Cole was, was somewhere like, fuck, I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, good, good on yeah. Mega Red for, for getting to go out in Madison Square Garden. Um, yeah. But. My feed, actually, at that point, my feed killed itself out of embarrassment, honestly. <laughs> I had a rough feed, man. It's like if I was live, it was shit. If I let it go like a minute, so I'd be like a minute behind, it would run fine. Oh, right. really? We had no troubles here, but sometimes. You New Japan World? Yeah. Well, what did you use? I'm using New Japan World on Internet Explorer on on Xbox One. Oh, oh I was using it just on a Mac Mini connected to a TV. 
Yeah. So I don't know. I, the internet exploder on fuck. Well, internet exploder sucks, period. But it does. It does. On an Xbox, it's who fucking knows. <laughs> Usually it works pretty good, though. Yeah. I The the other option I use for New Japan is with a Chromecast, and, and it works really good. Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, we talked about that six, man. I don't know. It yeah, was I don't feel like I need to say anything else about it. It was a schmaz. There was, yeah. it was too much. It didn't even need to be on this show. It, it really went. just, yeah. It, Ring of Honor, man, very TNA. Man. Yeah. But like, oh, Impact's not going to be TNA anymore? Well, let's fucking do it, boys. Somebody's got to yeah. fill the shoes. All right. Speaking of, <laughs> okay, we did. We talked about United We Stand, but we didn't talk about the fucking main event. So, I don't remember shitting on how bad RVD and Sabu No, we, we talked about the promo, and that was about it. Uh, oh, it was, did we skip other matches? Oh, we started having tech problems. We did, we did start having tech problems, but I mean, yeah. at the same time, Sabu looked absolutely atrocious. Um, RVD, let me, RVD looked <laughs> like RVD. You know, he, just, he looked stoned. They signed him. Yeah, they st- yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder why they didn't sign Sabu. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck, dude. Oh my, uh, that was pretty shit. Yeah. I guess we just kind of we started having problems, so that'll be fun. And then later, and they added uh, people are listening to this, it'll just go from <laughs> blah, 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 one to the other. Yep. But I mean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> fuck it. Technical difficulties. What can we do? Um, yeah. So yeah. where the fuck are we on this one? <laughs> uh, we are Let's at uh, Dragon Lee, Bandito, and Ishimori. In a, in a match, I thought this that was awesome. It was it was so good. It was so good. It was a shame that you had so much more great wrestling this weekend because this match I feel is probably not getting the love it deserves. It would have made my top five if I had more time. It only had nine minutes, dude. Yeah, no, that's that's very true. And in a, in a show that ran so long, I can understand why you take nine minutes from this match, but you could have taken it away from a lot of other things. Yeah. I mean, dude, there was so much waste of time on there. You know, the yep. whole that whole six man thing was just forever because it's Mega Ran does a song and then Bully Ray and him have an interaction and then everyone comes out and it's like, holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah. This match it, needed more time because it was really awesome. It, yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. Like the, the, the match before it was almost like an M. Night Shyamalan movie where like there had to be all these twists. And and fuck it. <laughs> I thought you meant that I woke up at the end and realized I was dead the whole fucking time. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll use that joke again, motherfuckers, thinking about that I did that before. I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking jokes. jokes. My fucking jokes. <laughs> this is my show. <laughs> <laughs> This is a hard show. <laughs> but, uh, oh. um, so does that. I thought Dragon Lee was awesome. Um, how about that crazy moon salting? Oh, that whatever that cocksucking throw, like, moon fall salting. Fall away slam. Yes. I don't know what that was. What did what did Kevin Kelly? Kevin Kelly came up with some kind. No, Colt Cabana. This is not a move. <laughs> <laughs> Launch both of those motherfuckers. Yeah. That looked crazy, man. It was almost like a, a avalanche uh, f- the double fall away slam. Is almost what it was like. He but, did a moonsault in there. Well, I he think. did do a moonsault. So like, what? I don't know. <laughs> it's like an inverted Spanish fly. I don't know. It was. I call it I'm the one with moonsault fall away slam. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Colt Cabana's not a real move. Yeah, I'm not a real move. Uh, so that was great. Um, also, Dragon Lee, I think that's awesome uh, for him to be the junior champion. He's awesome. So, that you know, is he going to take the belt to CMLL for a while? I have no idea. I, I'd assume he'd defend it there uh, a couple times. Um, with the rumor of Takahashi coming back in the summer, this does lead up to a, a great return match, but it would have been nice if, like, Takahashi could have come in and, you know, just at least had something, you know? Yeah, I I've heard. Did they mention it on commentary? I heard people say commentary did, but I didn't. Time, I, uh, I like that. They did mention Takahashi. I I think I think they did because they they mentioned how like uh, uh, Dragon Lee's last uh, shot at the IWGP Junior Title was against Takahashi, 
in the match that broke his neck. Um, but I don't know if they went into detail, but I believe Dave Meltzer reported that he's returning in the summer, apparently, or some of yeah. them reported. So. This would be awesome. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. At least they're going that way. Yeah. You put it on Dragon Lee, he defends it a few times, and then after a match, Takahashi returns, and it's going to be fucking crazy. Yep. <laughs> the crowd's going to go nuts. They will, so. and, and I, can, I can see them wanting to save that for a Japanese show. Oh, yeah. I think being North American, we're like, yeah, dude, at MSG. And really, they're like, yeah, no, we're good. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and, and Naito said it best, too, like, when they were talking about, like, New Japan on and, and on MSG in one of those clips that they showed. It was Naito saying, like, a lot of people older than me have uh, have, have good feelings about MSG. And it's like, huh? Uh, it's like, you don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's a building. <laughs> yeah, it's a building that a lot of things happened years ago in whoop de fucking do I in, mean, in yeah, Japan, right. In Japan, they wrestle in buildings thousands of years old, I'd assume. <laughs> yeah. You assume. Did you say you assume? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you know, the Tokyo Dome was actually built by ancient Japanese no, 1,000 years not ago. I mean. That's not what I mean. I mean, like... Like, uh, like, uh, not, not thousands of years ago either. Like, fucking, um, uh, Cork, and I'm sure Cork is an old fucking building. That's an old sumo hall. Oh, yeah. Right? So well, I'm sure yeah, that has right? more, more legacy in it than Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Dropping bombs. <laughs> Fuck you in your fucking arena. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's like at least it was a building that's uh, they never named dumb shit like Smoothie King Center. Or... Yes, that's true. At least it stayed Madison Square Garden. <laughs> fucking Yum yeah. Brand Arena. What was the RV, RV Camping World Arena or something like Camping World Arena? It's fucking retail. Uh, <laughs> dumb as fuck. <laughs> the Bass Master fucking arena. <laughs> <laughs> Live from Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> um, in the the four way tag match, which I didn't really care much about anyway. Um, I, I they botched f- the fuck out of this PCO entrance. <laughs> they did. Uh, PCO should not have been. That chair should not have been shown until PCO was in it. Yeah. Well, they show it right away, and it's like, oh, they're setting it up. I'm like, oh, you're dumb fucks. Okay, good one. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they show him going in it, and they had commentary had to try to cover it, and it was just really bad. It was. It was. But overall, if that if that uh, entrance would have been done properly, it would have been fantastic, because I fucking yeah. love it, uh, especially theme music. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. Yeah. And it goes into Dude, like a horror movie. Is music? someone going to stand in the way and tell that guy no? Right? Dude, right? that fucking uh, power bomb out of the ring, just on the floor. Oh, just just eat shit and then gets right back up. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing was fantastic. He's a, he's a fucking tank. Yeah, a God I was like, tank. what the fuck is this? Why is this guy back? He's not good. But I agree. I kind of do like the um, the fucking undead monster thing. Yeah, like that whole gimmick is dope. Um, it's great until he doesn't get back up. You yeah. know, which is probably gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Frankenstein movies ended that way. That's not the only crazy spot he did either. He did, he did that fucking like senton, senton to somebody on the apron to the Mark outside Briz- thing. Jay Briscoe, he, I, I think he might have like taken five years off of Jay Briscoe's life. Dude, <laughs> damn, that's it's fucking him. crazy. The, the shit that guy is doing. Why is he doing the craziest shit in pro wrestling right, right now? Yeah, I know. He's just like Sabu beat this. You know, <laughs> yeah, fucking crazy man. Um, and he's one of the two yeah. people on the show that's had a match in MSG before. Oh, right. Like nearly, was it like 30 years of previous, yeah, like almost yeah. to the day or 25 years, whatever it was. Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, him and him and Bully Ray, the only two to have worked Madison Court Garden. Hmm. Uh, Gorillas of Destiny get the win here, which I think we kind of expected. Yeah. Well, I mean, we um, called this last week on the show that they would be the good fit in ROH. Yeah. Enzo and Cass jump the barricade and attack. I mean, we kind of <sighs> desperation. Yeah. Yeah. Like at, at first, I will say that I was like, oh, my God, again, like there's another one. 
right? Like first, yeah. cause like I love conspiracy theories, right? So my mind first went, I was like, Oh my God. It's like Enzo's like the Joker and dropping fucking <laughs> terrorist attacks all over <laughs> wrestling in New York. Cause like I could see that guy trying to do something stupid like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then uh, at the same time, it's like, I'm watching this video cause you can't see what's going on on the crowd. So I was confused. I was like, what the fuck? Like they're kind of showing it, but they're not, they're kind of talking about it, but they're not. And then you go on Twitter <laughs> And you see that end zone cast are just there. No security ever comes and mm. work punches. And some dude, of them, some of the punches obviously a work, work, but dude, so many people, what, Look, I, they didn't feel the, that was their argument. It was like, well, they didn't show it. Yeah. Like you're doing the job for them. Are you fucking this stupid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. The, uh, the, for me, the, the icing on the cake was just seeing Mark Briscoe lay in some heavy fucking blows square to Enzo's jaw. Like, that was fucking fantastic. And I felt so good inside. So fucking yeah. good. And to see Bully Dude. Ray just pick him up and just toss him into the barricade. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was. It's dumb, though, so, dude. It's you're gonna bring these guys in. You're gonna run them as a heel. It's not gonna work. See, this is the thing. I I would say that if it was any other tag team that had any clout, this could be something. But where it's Enzo yeah. and Cass, it's wasted. Like this. This to me is a very clever angle to run because like like we said like twitter's doing the work for them and it's, and it's yeah. causing some kind of like somebody a lot of people i assume are going to tune into roh when they do their next tape just to see if they mention it like uh, and, and what's going on with it because you know it's a work or most people should know it's a work but um I don't, are they going to be there are they going to wrestle there full time i'd assume so and down the line but like if if done wow. correctly you you'd slow roll this you know Dude, I feel mean? <laughs> like that's gonna happen. I'm gonna fucking predict it for you. Uh, Cass is gonna wrestle in a shirt and then probably have a seizure at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's probably gonna make some poor life choices, and everybody's gonna hate him. At the end. No, I'm just being a dick. But really though, that guy's like everyone was like he's fucking out of shape. Which everything I've seen from him lately, like he's super out of shape. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, he's super out of shape. He's had what two matches I, that I'm aware of? One of which he had a fucking seizure after or before. <laughs> and Enzo has done nothing wrestling. Other it's than, gonna be awful, and they were awful before. Yeah, they were. They were. They were like Daniel Bryan couldn't get a good match with Big Cass. So, dude, you would not believe how many people. And I don't think it was just like straight Mark shit, you know. Or people like fuck this, but there was a lot of people that like fuck this, fuck Ring of Honor. <laughs> yeah. After all the things yeah. they did, not only this, but yeah, this was the icing like, on the cake. This this is really <laughs> this really turned people's cheek to to this. I I really do believe. I don't. I, don't, I was, yeah. I was following the Ring of Honor's Facebook throughout the night, and they make posts about what happens and shit, and people are just like, oh my god, they didn't post about that. No, but like Taven goes one. over the like Taven has become the champion and it was like nine out of ten comments are like fucking negative on it. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they and not re- like oh because he's a heel because like fuck this shit. I mean Taven. I know I have less of a problem with it than they do, but like Taven, I think it's still a bad idea. He's a good worker, but there's nothing else. You know what I mean? There's literally nothing else. He's just a plain plain guy. He's not a world champion. No, no. And they spent a lot of time trying to get the crowd to think he is and like you know to build that story but it just didn't work no no it didn't so shame yeah other than that uh, saber tapped on a hashi which was like weird they're, um, they, they're putting the rocket like behind it, him they're they're, hmm? they're they're straight shooting him to the top you know I mean, they really like zach saber jr so i don't get it yeah it's not my cup of tea either but whatever i don't get it <laughs> We'll see. I mean, it's whatever. If he gets like how far up they do, they push him. Yeah. You know? And we we said the same thing about Jay, Jay White. So fuck. <laughs> what can you say? J- oh, J- I New think Japan I has a way. said that I have way more of a chance of coming around on Jay White. David. Yeah, no, and I can understand why. Uh, but New Japan does have a way of of turning it around and, and making you invested in it after, down the road. So. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, <laughs> I respect his style and the shit he does, but I just like, to me, it just bores me. I get you. I get yeah. you. Hmm. Well, that was it. I mean, yeah, Taven, uh, I guess becoming the champion, which I thought was a bad idea. I thought that match was way too long. I got bored in it. I, I did too. There wasn't enough uh, uh, good 
different spots. You know what I mean? Like, sure, they made the the rings or the the ladders into an X. Yeah. That's about it. And the t- and the icing on the cake is a big purple ladder. <laughs> yeah, it was like what thirty minutes long. This match. It, it was it was pretty long. I don't know exactly how long it was, but it was long. I kind of forgot. I forgot about it totally. When I, after Ibushi Naito, I was like, "All right, Okada White." Go. No. <laughs> yeah. And can you believe that the rumor is that Ring of Honor was trying to be like, was honestly being like, "So what's going to be the last match on the show?" <laughs> really? That blows my mind. Blows my. If fucking you mind. aren't fucking, you're not smart enough to realize that your belt has nothing on that one, especially this much like this good of a matchup for it. Yeah, you kidding me? Yeah, you 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 are delusional at best. <laughs> and I thought, I thought I noticed a little some little things Ring of Honor was doing, because um, they were like one of them. What the fuck? What's like a dude from the NWA champion, Nick Aldis? Nick Aldis. I believe it was him who was like, "This is the main event." You know, like they were really like you know, this main event, and then like afterward, it was like, "Oh, the cool main event." But it was like they were really trying to to push that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, they can do whatever they want. The, the, I don't know which one it was, but he was saying, like, you know, like, oh, this is the real, you know, main event. Like, I'm oh, pretty okay. sure he was, he was uh, the commentator for the ladder match. Yeah. Pretty sure he was. But yeah, sa- he at was. the same time, they can do whatever the fuck they want. You know, uh, yeah. they're just going to dig a deeper hole. Yeah, Taven's the champion, and the crowd didn't really react to that. I didn't, I mean, granted, he's a heel, but still. Yeah, uh, I, don't I don't know. To me, you you really could have uh, gotten Marty to really at yeah, least yeah. be a, a, a shining. Even if here. I'm saying, even if he's leaving in like three months or leaving in two months, put it on him. Yeah, fuck it. You yeah. know, I mean, like if you're paying him, get something out of it. You could have figured out, put it on him, and figure out where to go from there. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think Taven's the answer, dude. No, no. God no, man. God no. Yeah. It's really interesting because like they lost people and they were in this situation it was like the story kind of coming out of the, you know last year was wheel ring of honor right the ship you know like what are they going to do when they lost all these guys and i feel like they've made all just really bad fucking ideas well like they've picked yeah. up roosh they've picked up bandito they started the year good you know what I mean? It's like okay. All they're doing is beating beating Bandito. I mean, which, I mean <laughs> yeah. Roosh beat Bandito in the like the first pay per view after they were both there. Yes, yes, that the seventeenth anniversary. Because the first thing they did was put those two guys together. We're like, yeah, no, put those, you know, keep them apart for a long time. <laughs> yeah, no, that was pretty piss poor. But I mean, the the signing was good. <laughs> yeah, that's all been downhill Does, from there. It's going to be bad, I think. It's going to be bad. Because you're going to find yourself being the... I, I think I think the day AEW starts, Ring of Honor has to be down a notch there. I mean, they got to fall down to, what, three? Are they number two in America right now? I suppose they... Although, uh, I guess we can have NXT, right? NXT would be two. I guess. In my... Maybe. In my hierarchy, I would have... <laughs> well, I, I would group NXT and WWE together. Um, yeah. I'm WWE. talking business here, like how much business they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, it's probably ROH being number two because they're doing definitely more business than Impact. They're doing more business than um, MLW. Uh, MLW, New Japan. New Japan only does a couple of shows, so you can't really count them, I guess. But right. in my own list, I would have New Japan's number two. Yeah, I think the day AEW starts, it's going to overtake it. It's going to have yeah. better television. We started hearing stuff about that this week. Uh, it's it's going to have be, definitely better television. So Yeah, it's supposed to be around October sometime. Yeah, I don't know. I'll see. I, I see some dark days for Ring of Honor coming ahead. I do. I do as well. Uh, hopefully they can, they can, as you said, write the ship, but I don't know. Yeah. It's getting a little late yeah. for that. So that was the MSG show. I thought it was awesome. I, uh, too long for me, but you know. Yeah, uh, way too long. I wanted to watch more wrestling, and when I looked at the time, I was like, "Holy fuck!" So then, me and Travis just watched like uh, a couple things from the Hall of Fame. We just wanted to see Bret Hart get tackled, <laughs> to see what happened after, and then uh, yeah. we uh, we wanted to see the DX one. And I mean, it was it was fun. I didn't really fucking watch any of it. Uh, uh, Triple Triple H, 
Triple H was saying that you can't thank Vince McMahon. And that's one of the things you can't do is it's written down somewhere backstage. And uh, he said he'll, f- he'll fire him. And then Billy speaks up and is like, well, you can't fire me because he works for AEW. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> and uh, then Triple H basically said that Vince will buy that piss ant company just to fire you or something like that. So, yeah. does, does he not realize that the cons have more money than McMahon? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's just like, you know, oh, grandpa's being edgy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> grandpa's being... oh, fuck. We better keep moving because this show's already seems long. Maybe it's because we had tech problems forever. Yeah. I mean, I we're know. getting I just there. feel we're like we've there. been recording this show fucking all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it started roughly around like a little after 10 my time and we're at close to one. <laughs> Good fucking Lord. <laughs> Let's move on to the news. Ooh. This week in the news, a man in a Rastafarian hat tackles Bret Hart and more. Over to you, Jim. I'm Jim Vicious, and this is news to you. Uh, attack, uh, uh, attacked Bret Hart, tackled Bret Hart. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I looked at that guy's Twitter. Uh, he seems like a real fucking winner. He's he's a he's a piece of work, isn't he? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, there was many. Travis Brown beat the piss out of him. <laughs> and so did Davy Boy and Dash Wilder. Dude, Wilder fucking just oh. folded that dude yeah. up. Yeah, just all while wearing a Heart Foundation jacket too, which made it all that much better. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, pretty good shit. Um, I mean, what else? Did you see anything else from that? Yeah, I guess you mentioned it. Yeah, no, I only that's the only two things I've seen. Brett, you know, was was Brett after after it all happened. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like they missed an opportunity to have Brett say, "Well, I thought I'd taken my last uh, last bump in a ring, but <laughs> cause he, yeah. got, he got pulled down hard." <laughs> Uh, and that other, I mean, some of this isn't even really fucking news. Zach Ryder and Chelsea Green announced their engagement. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. That chick, remember how hot she looked in fucking Lucha Underground? Yeah. I just had like a fucking full on bone for that chick in there. But like, I don't know. She looks hot until like after she has a match and then she looks weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, she looks... She looks hot, but sometimes she looks weird. It's like a 50-50. You never know what you're going to get. That, that, could, like. that it could be why she uh, she had adopted that crazy lady gimmick. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it worked for her. That? So congrats to them. After I like shit on her. <laughs> not shitting on her. I like her, actually. <laughs> I thought she was a badass in Lucha Underground. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of her work. Yeah, for the five minutes that she was that she was there. <laughs> the Amazing Red has announced his retirement this week. I had no idea he was still working. Yeah, well, I guess he's been doing some stuff. Uh, that's a guy I like. It just really reminds me of that era of yeah. wrestling, right? When the indie wrestling was kind of first really coming out. And it was, you, know, it was you see all tits. these dudes doing crazy shit. Dudes who wouldn't be in the big companies, you know, because they're too small and stuff. Yeah, you had Jack Evans, you had, you know, Amazing Red. Uh, there was a tag team, the SATs. I don't know if you remember them. Uh, Not really. Joel and Jose Maximo. They were they were pretty good. They were with Amazing Red. They were a, they were a team. I can't remember what they were called, but they were a team. Um, hmm. Then you had, like, uh, Trent Acid. Trent Acid, yeah. He's yeah. gone now. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he was a, he, I loved him and him and uh, Johnny Cashmere as the Backstreet Boys or the Backseat Boys or the whatever the yeah. fuck they call themselves. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it kind of really took me back. So he's a guy who's super talented and there's just like a lot of people just never know, you know. Yeah, I mean, and then you got John Cena doing his move, Code Red. Right. <laughs> right, right. It'll be interesting. I'll have to take that one to the uh, Suplex City Limits Hall of Fame board. I, I, He's I, amazing. I, Red SCL Hall of Famer. That'll be the debate. Let us know what you think. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, that should be a, a thumbs up. I think. Hmm. Uh, let's see. AEW 
uh, of course, did sign Jim Ross. That yes. took like two days. Yes. <laughs> Big shock there. <laughs> yeah, he was without job for, for just mere hours. All right. Um, they also got Justin Roberts, uh, the ring oh, announcer. Yeah. He's great. I like him. I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, a tout, Alicia Tout, who's done some backstage shit for Impact and stuff. She'll be their backstage announcer. Yeah, she's interviewer, been, if you will. She's been good on the things I've seen her do on Impact. Uh, you know, she's she's more lively. You know, she's not just a stick in the mud. Yeah. Well, she's not a robot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I like Justin Roberts. He... Uh, he liked to put sauce on shit and they wouldn't let him, you know, they'd bitch about how he said certain things and it's like, fuck. That's what made me love Justin Roberts. It's just, he's, he's, yeah. he's Howard Finkel. You know what I mean? He, he, he boasterizes his voice and just makes it so much different than what it was. Ch- Tony Chimmel was the same thing too. I, I really liked yeah. him. And two Roberts left and he had stories to tell you how fucked up that company is too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Getting bullied by wrestlers and shit. Like, dude, I'm a ring announcer. Go fuck yourself, yeah. man. Like, why? Why? Cocksuckers. Um, yeah, Van Damme signs an agreement with Impact. The Usos sign a new deal. Yeah, that's I mean I mean I, 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 I it's not that I didn't assume they were staying they were leaving the WWE. Um, cause I mean, they've, that's where they've been. That's all they know really. Um, yeah, but I, th- I feel like I would love to see a, a young box Usos match. Yeah. It's another one of those examples to me where it's like, yeah, what else can they do there? There's nothing left for them to do. No, no. You, know, you might as well just let them go and sign them back in the fucking three years or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, as, as you know, WWE doesn't want to do that right now. You know what I mean? Just well, of especially course not. at the of beginning. Not. But I mean, down the road, it's got to happen at some point in time. Has to. Yeah. Uh, and just uh, the then WWE has a WWE studio show to premiere on FS1 this fall. Yes, that Ryan Satin wants to be a part of. Oh, of course, I thought that was so great. He just like, oh, I'd love to be a part of this. Like, yes, thank you for confirming what everyone's know. You just do. You would. All your shit is just really trying to get a job there. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So Fuck. if you, if you want to take Ryan Satin's word for clout, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much the news. Uh, from there, let's move on to everyone's favorite segment, Mark Tank. After a word from our sponsor, join Nature Boy Ric Flair, the Total Package Lex Luger, Sting, and many other superstars of World Championship Wrestling for a once in a lifetime experience on the Bruise Cruise. Sail on the MS New Amsterdam from Tampa, November 30th, and not only will you visit the exotic beaches off Key West, Cozumel, Grand Cayman, and Ocho's Rios, Jamaica, but you can be part of special WCW events, including beach parties, wrestling events, and photo and autograph sessions. Make your Bruise Cruise reservations now. Have the time of your life on the Bruise Cruise. Woo! Mark Tank, where we read Mark's comments mm. from social media as they are typed for your entertainment. Uh, let's start up with uh, let's start with Zach Madsen, the guy who tackled Bret Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Tweeted this three days ago. Uh, what's going on here, Triple H? Do none of my messages transmit to you? Look, maybe I spoke out of turn and you're not in charge. Great job with NXT. Now tell me who is in charge. It's damn near Sunday, and Zach, Zach, still has bills to pay. What the fuck? Yeah. This guy's yeah. a madman. Like, he reminds me of that dude who would, like, uh, you know, wiped shit on the NXT yeah. building and stuff. Yeah. These, these we- that's weird. The only, the only difference is they fucking should have shot this guy. I bet you his favorite song is Stand by Eminem. <laughs> Uh, let's see. A boy, J.D. Roberts, sent uh, this one over. 
that's pretty good. Uh, Vilu Prabhakaran <laughs> at the elites. Okay, whatever. They, he says, to replying to Tangaloa, he says, fucker, fuck you, dumbass. They are on the show of New Japan Global and G1 Supercard. How they come to be enter you, you fucking Tangaloa, if you want to fuck WWE, well, fuck it. Respect the independent country wrestling. <laughs> that There's a lot to unbox there. Like, yeah. Like what? That's him respo- <laughs> responding to Tangaloa, like bitching about Enzo and Cass. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I don't know that. I don't even know what he's trying to say. He, he, he's, 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 this is a long, convoluted way to say, fuck you, Tangaloa. <laughs> How they come to be, enter you, you fucking Tangaloa. <laughs> <laughs> and this was from Tamatanga, not even Tangaloa. Like, they were responding to Ta- Tamatanga, and they called him Tangaloa. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. That's good shit. Let's see what else we got. Um, our boy JG Jr. Send this one over. Gavin Essence. Much love to you, sir. Sent this one over from Dr. Extreme. Oh. It says... Bret Hart, what happened to Bret? Just can't be a random attack. I'm waiting for the attacker to admit that he was paid to do this. History between Bret, Bret and Vince still may not be 100%. Again, why a ring and not on a stage? Just odd. <laughs> I will say, they'll never do that ring thing ever again. Dude, the fucking, the idea, the conspiracy theories, man. It's so great. Here's another one. Gav, Cav Trooper 67 says, The attack on Bret Hart was staged used to get trending on social media and detracts from G1 Supercard show going on right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this God. one's great. Renee Sergi, 21. She must have been watching the Hall of Fame during the show. She said, did the Honky Tonk Man even wrestle? Give me Tori Wilson in DX, please. That is what <laughs> I want to that. see. I've seen that. What a fucking dumb twat. <laughs> And the answer to that question is sort of. Kind of. He almost wrestled. <laughs> kind of. Mm, He's related man. to Jerry Lawler. <laughs> uh, Michelle, Shield fan 15. There you go. Should uh, let you know what you're getting into. Iconics win one of them cheat during a match. Cheating holding the hand so they get the pin is not the way to win matches. <laughs> Cheating, holding the hands. What is she even talking about? I don't know. <laughs> like, what is there a certain match she's referencing? Maybe that that shit show on SmackDown. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Um, this one, this dude, he basically proposed, you know, Lesnar going over or something. Okay. Which this guy, he, I don't know this person's name, but he sent me a screenshot. He says, go fucking die. Seth is the king and will win the championship off that shit-ass Brock. Fuck you for believing otherwise. Believe that bitch. <laughs> Man, he sounds like he's going to shank him. Imagine taking wrestling that serious, dude. Oh, dude. that's. But there's people. There, there's a lot of them, too. Yeah. They're fucking Looney Tunes, man. Oh, boy. Let's see. We got to send some... Uh, by Andrew Vaughn on Twitter. Um, I was like arguing with some chick and blocked, and he continued on the fight, and uh, so he got to see these and sent these over. What what um, what was the argument about? <clears throat> Basically, I posted that thing on where there's this terrible botch this week by Sasha. Oh yeah, and uh, you know something about the I can something like tell me more about. And because it's on them too, and then so we got I got a lot of heat for that. Yeah, I mean Uh, you can't say any bad about the women. Yeah, that gay teen O W (laughs) says this is the thing people will call women like Alicia bad when she gets no opportunity to prove anything. If she was given a thirty minute match with Naomi, it would be pay per view main event worthy. Period. And I never said Maurice was all that. But she's pretty decent and her matches. Oh boy, this this guy is construct, eh? It's a girl. It's a girl. Oh, oh, well she's she's construct. 
Yes. <laughs> She's got to be in love with these girls. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, but this is same girl. Uh, different tweet. I agree with you, but Alicia is great in the ring. And Maurice was good. Oh, this one must have been before that. And was good too, but I agree with Eva and Rosa. <laughs> what the so fuck? So she agrees they are bad. Fair Alicia enough. is super talented on the mic and in the ring, but doesn't get to showcase her ability. All the girls backstage know she's talented. And WWE knows it too. But oh, but WWE knows how good she is at putting over people since she is the best female seller of all time. Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's some high fucking praise, bro! Like holy shit. Yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's blowing my mind that there's somebody out there that actually does believe this. Yeah. And it's another one. I didn't save her tweets, but she's a fucking mark, so I'll talk about her too. Uh, I don't know her name offhand. I just tweeted out this thing like during um, Okada and White, there was this guy and he's like arguing. You can tell like he's having fucking woman problems oh, yeah. in the front. And uh, I was like, oh, should have left her at home, bro. And this chick's like, meh, meh, what if she's arguing with him and should have left him at home? Uh, yeah, who bought the front row tickets to a New Japan uh, event? I probably uh, do. The probably it's the dude that wanted to bring her, not the other way around. How 2019 of you. Yeah. Like, I'm sick of women being slighted by male wrestling. Uh -huh. It's like, dude, calm the fuck down. If somebody makes a joke, like, oh, I hate, I hate society. I yeah. fucking hate people. It's pretty shitty. <laughs> like, oh, the plight of the fucking white woman. You, you've had it so tough in life, haven't you? <laughs> what is this thing? It's like, have there been bullshit things against women? Sure. But, like, are we going to act like women don't rule the world? White women don't fucking rule everything? <laughs> I mean, Fuck everybody, everybody needs to have their their fight. You know what I mean? Everybody everybody needs to feel like they're fighting for something. It's it's. I feel like this is the reason why religion was invented, so that people would be busy with other shit. And now that people aren't <laughs> with religion, now they need to find something else to bitch about. It's a shame. Uh, it's a no. fucking shame. It's a fucking shame. Uh, and this week's Mark Tank winner. Uh, Let's see. So I said, with some, somebody said some time we have a uh, fucking conversation about the abilities of the iconics in the ring. <laughs> and then someone says the same thing about Sasha Banks in the ring. And this guy is defending Sasha Banks, Stiano Talk. And he says, she's one of the greatest ever at a very young age. She's 27 and has had at least four of the greatest top 10 matches ever under her belt. Oh, wow. That's another, like, are you sure this is not the same person with the Alicia Fox account? No, this is somebody else. Are you 100% sure? I feel like you're not 100% sure. This has to be. No, I am 100% sure. <laughs> this is Theano talk. So that's our Mark Tank, but I felt like I had him on the fucking line. You know, like I had a fish. So I was like, oh, yeah, tell me your top 10 matches, bro. <laughs> then he did. <laughs> And to clarify, he was talking about women's WWE matches, which, like, what a wasteland category. Oh, yeah. Jesus, what yeah. was this number one? Sasha and Bailey. I don't know if it's in order, really, but there's Ember versus Asuka 2, Sasha versus Bailey, Brooklyn, Sasha versus Bailey, Iron Woman match. He was put Iron Woman in there. Sasha versus Becky versus Charlotte Mania. Charlotte versus Becky Evolution. <laughs> like, who even remembers all these? Wow, wow. That's uh, apparently women's wrestling has only been around for two years. No, there's one old one, dude. Oh. Trish versus Lita, Raw. Give me a fucking <laughs> break. Yeah, because he saw that one, I'm sure, you know, talked about recently. Oh, tr neither Trish nor Lita was a good wrestler. Mm. That match <laughs> is dumb. Like, fucking Lita almost killed herself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Par for Good Lord. Par for Mark Tank. I mean, she t she sucked dick to get trained. I mean, she, do you expect the greatest training? <laughs> yeah. So that's that. 
That's our Mark thing. Uh, what's going down in the Federation, man? Uh, well, I uh, I released uh, the episode Hog Wild on Patreon. Forgot that I did it and did not upload to the regular feed, so that came out on Friday. Sorry, guys. That's uh, just a busy WrestleMania week and moving, and so uh, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, our next episode is in the can, and uh, that's with um, a Patreon subscriber who uh, wanted us to do WWF Invasion 2001. Uh, so uh, we did it with him, and uh, they'll be hmm. out in, they'll be out in a couple of weeks, and you'll be good to go. There you go. Check that shit out of our podcast. I found if you like this show, you love that show. Uh, MoFudge dot com, <laughs> everywhere else on the SCL Network side of things. Pay per view take two. Uh, our next episode coming soon will be WrestleMania eleven. This is Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence <laughs> Taylor. God I love it. Yeah, and uh, shout out to a boy, Joe Justice. He hit the money mark tier, and he chose TNA Victory Road 2009. Uh, is that with Sting uh, and Hardy? I don't think it is, actually. No? Oh, that was my first 10. thought, but I don't think it is. I I'm not sure 10. yet. I'm not looking ahead. I'm going to watch that show as I do with everything. On you know, I don't look at anything ahead of time. I just watch it as it happens, so. I feel it. We'll I, I mean, that's, that's a naive way to go into it. <laughs> that's why I like it. Yeah, I like to do that way. So I write all my notes, you know, just on a first watch. Oh, so. I remember this show. Oh, this works in well with uh, recent happenings, Jim. Good. <laughs> well, there you go. Good. Uh, that'll be coming up soon. Our first venture into TNA. We've been wanting to do that, so that will be fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jim. Oh, 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 I know why this is on here now. Oh, the Federation have covered the highlight of the show. Oh, man, it's going to be fucking bad. You can watch only watch bad shit. If we've done it, then you know you're in for a treat because it's bad. Can I just tell you what match is on there? Can I just tell you? Yeah. It's it's, uh, Jenna Maraska taking on Charmel. It's the minus five stars. Oh, that's that negative five stars (laughs) match. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) That's just uh, that's just that's just one piece of the pie. Oh boy. Well, that's coming up. Uh, So that should be a fucking fun time. Uh, Here's a good time to give a shout out to our friends at THT Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Shaheen Boxman over there. Wednesdays live on Mixler. Also live on Wednesdays on Mixler. Get in the corner, yuck, nasty dog, a baby. Uh, shout out to Nuclear Heat Graphics. Check them out for all kinds of awesome pro wrestling uh, artwork. Uh, Sat Pod, the strap, shooting the shiznit, wrestling's high marks. Uh, we miss you, Bobby Anthem. <laughs> I got Bobby <laughs> Anthem's text phone number. I texted him this week. <laughs> so it's good to hear from him. He responded. Spoiler, I guess. It's not like I got it. I'm texting him like, fuck you, talk to me, and he won't. Just... <laughs> Although it would be hilarious if that's the way it was. He just ghosts it, yeah. <laughs> and then we'd have the Bobby Anthem update every week. Did he text like, back? No. He's like, new phone, who dis? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Is there any, I'm sure there's other shit we should be giving shout out. Oh, dude, shout out to our homies at Comedy Suplex. Yes. Mikey G, Peach Machine. Uh, I guessed it with them on Thursday. Kind of did a little preview. Their show's only a half hour long. I was like, how the fuck? It's like, how am I going to get all my spots in here? <laughs> You're like Will Ospreay. No. But uh, that's a super fun show. I suggest checking them out. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's like me talking about wrestling with two dudes who actually wrestle you yeah, know yeah. no more not just the fucking fat stone shit <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fun Fantastic. what a fucking what a weird world we live in uh so yeah, check that out um dude, wrestlemania i mean i mean it's gonna happen it's happening in like three hours i don't know probably started already let's be honest the pre-show starts in like two hours probably Maybe disgusting one. yeah it is it's gross plan to start late and fast forward a bunch of shit mm-hmm. yes sir that's the reason why this uh, episode came out the day of wrestlemania and not the day after wrestlemania like last year yeah someone texted me like like hey i want to take you out to dinner on sunday evening you free i'm like yep 
<laughs> For sure. <laughs> For a free meal? Oh, yeah, dude. Turn that I think down. that's it. I don't know. You got anything else? I I, no, no. I, uh, I mean, no. Don't, uh, don't be like that uh, Rastafarian kid at the Hall of Fame. Don't tackle. Yeah, don't be a dick. Guys, that's gone through strokes and shit and weak wrists. Stu Hart and won't, cancer. Uh, and cancer. Yeah. I mean, do we have to get Stu, Stu Hart to come here next week to give you guys a, a proper, you know, lashing and stretching? <laughs> Yeah, stretch is going to come. If you guys don't fucking act better, Stu Hart's going to show up and stretch all you out. Yeah, and I'll tell him where each and every one of you motherfuckers live. <laughs> Anyone who's bought a shirt from us, we could probably find the info. <laughs> Sending Stu over there. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to do it. As always, thank you very much for listening, supporting the show, buying the t-shirts, and all that shit. Uh, until next week, we'll be back. We'll talk... Talk a little WrestleMania, Raw sure we'll after WrestleMania, and yeah. so on. Yeah, it's we'll see where a... Ring of Honor goes with their first set of... Oh, maybe they're not taping new shit right away, huh? I don't know if they're taping new shit right away, no. Who knows? Oh, I'm definitely tuning in to the first new taping to see how much of a shit show that ends up being. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's crash, uh, crash Entertainment for sure now, for me. No. So let's see how fucked up they fuck Impact has a pay-per-view coming up here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that, that's I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that popped me so hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is it, as always. Until next time, may you get all of the dick and or pussy you desire. Remember, a winner is you. And most importantly, be fucking excellent to each other. And Bret Hart. Sure. <laughs>